The UMass Department of Psychiatry blends the best of the Nobel Prize winning University of Massachusetts and the UMass Memorial Healthcare System. Our research is cutting edge. We do both bench to bedside and also bedside to the community. We have some of the top researchers in the country in the area of autism, addiction, depression. We have state-of-the-art laboratories in our basic science research that's in genetics and neuroimaging. We have the new state-of-the-art Worcester Recovery Center and Hospital that's about to open. UMass will continue to be a national leader in public sector psychiatry. I've had bipolar disorder since I was, I think, very, very young, included paranoia, I tended to isolate. By the time I was 30, I had several hospitalizations and got some good treatment. I got involved in an advocacy group, and through that group, I actually got a job where I was became essentially a peer researcher and was able to bring my training, and I became the executive director of a, of a small nonprofit and really took to that. I really think that Doug Zadonis and his team has really brought a very different philosophy to a department of psychiatry involving the patient, the client in their own care, in developing a research agenda, in developing policies. That's not common. It's brave, in fact, because it's not easy to do it with acute care, but they've been extraordinarily supportive of the, the peer movement and peer services and now we have some grants together. I just think that that's really, I would say brave and unusual and I'm greatly appreciative of it because it's helped me with opportunities. When we think about integrated care here at UMass, we think at it several levels. One level trying to think uh, more wholly about the patient, the uh, physical health concerns of our psychiatric patients, the mental health concerns and well-being of our medical patients. But we also think of integrating at the level of providers, working together in teams in different kinds of ways and different kinds of processes. And finally, at the organizational level, how do we organize ourselves as a healthcare system to bring this kind of care and delivery to patients throughout the region? Our psychiatrists, myself included, travel out to clinics, to health centers. We see patients in collaboration with our colleagues there, with residents from other departments. We do things we never thought we'd do before. We make telephonic consultation, brief evaluations. It's not simply a matter of providing consults on site, but of actually getting to the processes themselves so that we're working hand in hand with our colleagues in, in primary care and other specialties. Our department is one of the national leaders in addressing homelessness amongst veterans. We have a national center for homelessness in which we're doing research, training, and clinical services for veterans. This is a very interesting time to be in psychiatry training. We're at a point where the neuroscience and the clinical neuroscience investigation techniques are catching up with psychiatric theory. So we actually emphasize in teaching our residents clinical neuroscience. I'm a neurologist as well as a psychiatrist. And our residents receive, I would say, equal attention to psychotherapy, psychopharmacology, and clinical neuroscience in their training. We emphasize clinical neuroscience perhaps more so than some programs because we believe this is the future. At UMass, we've developed innovative research from bench to bedside to the community around tobacco addiction. Uh, we have some of the leading researchers in the country in this area. Some of the work that we're doing in tobacco includes helping campuses go tobacco free. Our research is not only all over the nation in this particularly important issue, but we also are now global in China, Korea, and Nepal. The Center for Comparative Neuroimaging is a center that began in our department in the year 2000. We use several techniques from cellular biology to molecular biology to behavioral biology, getting a group of researchers interdisciplinary, working through imaging tools to make sure that we are the best, the brightest, and moving together to make sure our research is on the cutting edge. We span the globe in terms of the disorders we look at. We also span the globe in terms of the time in the lifespan. We have child studies, we have transitional age studies, and we have adult studies. We have 
innovative approaches to looking at these disorders, working together to look at mental health disorders as a global issue. Research is so important, especially as we're trying to discover evidence-based interventions for children and adolescents who suffer from emotional, behavioral, and developmental issues. CANDI stands for the Child and Adolescent Neurodevelopment Initiative here at UMass. We have a group of professionals who are really committed to trying to help children and families. We use neuroimaging techniques to try and understand what's going on in the, in the brain of children who have neurodevelopmental disorders. And we also investigate novel treatments that are safe for children so that hopefully we'll be able to provide evidence basis to the field of interventions that will lead to an improved quality of life. Candy Lab and CCNI are actually forging many joint efforts and it's very exciting for us. We've been combining efforts to look at uh, translational projects in ADHD and nicotine, uh, in early onset bipolar and more recently in autism. I'm very enthused about the future here at UMass. We are making some important discoveries that will transform psychiatric care here and around the globe.